Our gospel lesson this morning is from Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 14. Listen for God's word that is for us in this day. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. To bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today... This scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. History records that he was a great man. He had humble beginnings. He grew up in a small village, an ordinary boy who did nothing to draw attention to himself. Like most boys his age, he attended school, he also worked in the family business, and did his best to grow up strong and healthy. Deep inside, however, he knew he had a special purpose, a destiny to fulfill. As he grew older, people began to notice that there was something special about this young man. He had a talent and charisma. He was gifted like no other. It wasn't long before he started attracting crowds. Thousands came to see and listen to him. And he chose a small band of loyal companions who traveled with him everywhere he went. Many of them had given up their jobs just to be with him and take care of his needs. And as his fame spread, some grew jealous. Others thought he was leading people astray and they plotted against him, but his popularity only increased. He touched the lives of the young and old alike and brought joy and laughter to the weak and the downhearted, and many hailed him as a king. Toward the end of his short life, he suffered quite a bit, and some who had followed him fell away and turned to worshiping others, and he died alone. Those closest to him were left discouraged and confused. They never expected his life to end in that way. And soon after his death, there were rumors that he didn't really like. His followers spread the news all around and said he lives, and they said he's not dead, and some claimed they actually saw him. Even today, some say he is alive. So by now you figured out who this great man is, right? Elvis Presley. (laughs) Surprised? I think the people of Nazareth were surprised when Jesus read in the synagogue as well. It's good to be back, and it seems fitting today that we hear in the gospel of a time where Jesus returned. He came back. He came back to the region of Galilee. He came back to Nazareth, this place where he grew up. Now, this homecoming may bring to mind times when young men and women have gone and come back from college or from long journeys. Some may even have returned from a tour of service or having a baby, they've been away. And they've been shaped by experience away from home. They're the same, but they're not the same. And there's joy at the return, yet there's also expectations and hopes that may be largely unspoken or even subconscious. And scripture brings us into this moment when Jesus is the one who comes back, but not from attending school, but after some unusual offense. Jesus comes back after the Spirit came down when he was baptized by John. 
He comes back after the Spirit drives him into the wilderness to be tempted. He comes back and stands in the synagogue as he's done all around Galilee. And here in this place where they know him best, he reads these words from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he closes the scroll, he returns it to a place, and he teaches in this one sentence, as he says, today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, today this has been fulfilled. It says that today they are receiving all that this passage says, that this prophet has said so long ago. Today, the one who was promised to come and save is there, and it's him. This one that they've known before he could even speak, and they don't know what to say. Can you imagine Neil Armstrong at Neil Armstrong at 12 declaring I am going to walk on the moon? Or Madeline Albright at 5 looking up and informing her family I am going to be the Secretary of State. Or Martin Le- or Martin Luther King Jr at around 10 in a church full of African Americans saying I am going to achieve equal rights for us all across this land. Great dreams. Yet unlikely, if not impossible dreams. It's the kind of thing we might hear and nod while thinking to ourselves, good luck kid. Or I'll believe it when I see it. I wonder if the people of Nazareth were having such a moment with Jesus standing there before him saying, I am the Messiah, this one who's been prophesied for so long. I have and I am and I will bring this good news. Give sight, give freedom, lift oppression so all can live into their fullest self. And with those few words, with that passage from Isaiah, Jesus gives his identity and states what his ministry is all about. This is why Luke puts this way up front in chapter 4. Other Gospels put it later, but for Luke, it's this perfect introduction. This is what Jesus' ministry will be all about. Yet here in the place where the people most know him, Their reaction is startling. This passage goes on and we find that the people stare amazed and then they turn to one another and they ask, isn't this Joseph's son? That's the one who was just reading, right? The same one who was here before a few years ago. What is he saying he does? And while they're reeling from this revelation, the Jesus they knew who's saying he's the Messiah, he speaks again Beating them to that time, they ask for a sign. And he starts pulling in these prophets. He talked about how long ago there were those three years with no rain. And Elijah, he went to a widow, not one of Israel, but to one in Sidon. And then Elisha, the very next prophet, healed one leper. There were many lepers in Israel but he healed Naaman, a leader from outside. So this good news that's for the poor and the sight for the blind and the freedom from oppression, it's not just for them. It's not just for those people in Israel, but for those outside, even their enemies. And this is all too much. Jesus' own neighbors and friends, the ones who watched him grow up, They drove him out of town and tried to throw him from a ledge. But he passed right through them, the ones that could not see, 
to do exactly what Isaiah proclaimed, to fully live into God's word. It's so important that Jesus lived through the whole human experience. It's so important that he had a place where he grew up. But for those who knew him best, it was incredibly difficult to see, to see his mission and ministry clearly because they continued to look for what they expected, to look for what they wanted, for what they thought the Messiah would do for them. I think we can do this as well. We have a sense for what we long for the church to be. We have a warm place in our hearts for those scriptures that comfort us. And it is good. Yet it can also be what holds us back from following Jesus into the mission he proclaims now and today. Today, Jesus is still proclaiming this good news that the kingdom of God has come to give good news to those who are overlooked, to the ones with the least. Jesus proclaims freedom to those that the world seeks to hold down. Jesus returns sight to those who have lost their vision. Jesus proclaims a year of God's favor. Not a year where my side wins or your side wins. Not the year of our favor, but of God's. It might not be what we expect. It might be a surprise. Yet all of this ministry, this mission, these words, this is what Jesus lived out. And it is good news for us, but also for those who may be far away from us. So as we follow Jesus, this is the mission we too are given. To live into here, in this place where we are. It may be this place where you grew up. Maybe right here in our home church. But don't be surprised if there's some resistance. If it's hard, don't give up. If the world doesn't congratulate you, don't stop. If the world expects something different, don't let yourself be swayed. Keep seeking to know God's word and to give God's word and to live into it. Jesus walked right through the resistance to do what he proclaimed. The challenge that day in Nazareth and the challenge for us here today is to receive not the word of God that we want or the word that we expect, but the word of God that may lead us far beyond our comfortable borders. These ancient words of Isaiah they give good news. The Messiah, Jesus, the Anointed One, has come. And there's good news. There's hope for the poor. There's freedom for all who are trapped. There's new sight for those who see only darkness. And there's relief for the overburdened. This is the good news for us today. It's the good news for us to give to live into today and every day, especially when it's not what we expect. Amen. Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world. They ring sound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. World, wherever we roam, ancient words will guide us home. 
Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith. us through sacrifice, oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Martyr's blood, Satan's page, they have died. For this faith, hear them cry through the years, heed these words and hold them dear. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Oh.